Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Those who have been following this series for a while now will know that I am running a tank entirely using Red Seas products. Well today it's time to discuss their new LED lights, as well as why lighting is important and what is the correct photo period. Lighting is one of the most diverse and divisive topics in this hobby, but it's also one of the most important. For the majority of the corals we keep, light is what allows the zooxanthellae within the coral's tissue to photosynthesize. A byproduct of photosynthesis is glucose, which is a sugar that the corals can then use as a food source. This sugar forms approximately 85% of the coral's nutrition, therefore it's essential to provide them with the right intensity of light for the right amount of time, to ensure they're getting the best possible nutrition. There are three main different categories of lighting, metal halides, T5s, and LEDs. All of them have their pros and cons, with each category coming in a whole different range of prices. Because of this, it's very difficult to compare different types of light to each other. As with most things in life, paying more can get you something extra, but you're also paying more for it, so it's hardly a fair comparison. For this project, I'm going to be using two of the Red Sea Reef LED 90s, however there is also the Reef LED 50 available for smaller tanks. The Reef LEDs are in the middle price range compared to the rest of the market, and are built with a single, compact LED array covered by an optical glass lens. This is designed to create an even spread throughout the aquarium, essentially eliminating hotspots and dark patches. I found the lights easy to set up in just a couple of minutes, as they connect directly to Red Sea's app, and they've been designed in a way to keep everything as simple as possible, essentially eliminating user error. They come with two main adjustable channels, with an additional 3 watt moonlight channel for nighttime viewing. They are ideal for people that just want to plug their lights in and forget about them, knowing that the lighting part of the hobby is covered. The majority of reefers can't measure lighting, therefore it's very much an unknown for most people, and a lot of it is based on settings from other reefers found online. If your coral dies and you don't know why, knowing that you can eliminate lighting as a possible culprit can make life a lot easier, because you can focus your attention on looking elsewhere. Of the two channels, only the blue channel is actually required to grow corals, as it's a combination of blue, violet and ultraviolet wavelengths in the correct ratios. Corals can process red light as well, however it isn't essential and with these units it hasn't been included. Corals in our eyes process light very differently, and what is appealing for us isn't necessarily good for the corals, and in the same respect, what is good for the corals isn't necessarily appealing to us, therefore it's important that you find a happy middle ground. Red Sea claims that any combination of these two channels will always produce a spectrum which is found on a natural reef up to 30 metres deep, and that even more light sensitive corals such as SPS corals will thrive in any part of the tank, providing the correct coverage and tank depth are met. On top of the ability to choose your own settings, there are three presets which have already been programmed in. These are 15k, 20k, and 23k. All three of these presets run the blue channel at 100%, with the difference being the white channel percentage. For example, it's 10% for 23k, 50% for 20k, and 100% for 15k. As I previously mentioned, it's mainly for us, so therefore there shouldn't be any noticeable coral difference between the settings, it's just how we perceive the tank. In addition to these, there is also the usual sunrise and sunset options, lunar cycle, random clouds, and acclimation mode. Spectrum and intensity are just two pieces of the puzzle with regards to lighting, with the third being photo period, or how long the corals are being exposed to light for, and how long they should be in the dark for. It's a common misconception that more light is good for corals. Like us, corals need to rest, and one of the most common things people get wrong with their lighting is not taking this into consideration. It's advised that for every hour of light, there should be an hour of darkness, therefore I like to have all my lights set for 12 hours on and then 12 hours off. If you work during the day and you want to enjoy your tank in the evening, just have them set so that the lights don't come on until 11am and then they go off at 11pm. One final thing to mention about the ReefBeat app which I found very useful is that it notifies me in the event of power failure, which for many people will be the only piece of equipment that they own that could do this. Something else which I take into consideration when purchasing lights is aesthetics. You'll have heard me say this before, but as far as I'm concerned, a reef tank is essentially a piece of moving artwork, and the wrong choice of any piece of your equipment can easily take away from that beauty. 
Unlike things like pumps and skimmers, which can be hidden away out of view, generally our lights are very much on display. Therefore, like the tank and stand itself, they can either add or take away from the aesthetics. Installation onto the side of the tank was easy, using the Red Sea mounting arms, which come with the added benefit of being able to rotate into an upright position, giving you better access to the tank during maintenance. These lights are slightly thicker than the ones I've owned previously, but this is to allow for the heatsink and one of my favourite features. I like that the LEDs and glass lens are embedded into the unit, which helps prevent side glare from entering your eyes. I promised you I would only give you an honest opinion during this project, and with regards to coral health and growth, I can't comment yet, as currently I don't have any corals. However, I've been informed that the proof will be plain for everyone to see. To briefly sum up, from what I can tell, it appears to be a good all-rounder choice of lighting, which is sticking to the company's ethos of focusing on what corals actually need and making things as simple as possible for the consumer. I hope you enjoy watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.